Why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? Why must my heart feel lonely and long for heaven and home? When Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. Strengthens me 
trouble, Jesus gonna work it out. Jesus gonna work it out. Jesus gonna work it out. Well, I'd like to say hello out there, all that are out there, and all that are in here. This is the Children of the Free Church and Ministry. My name is Charles Garcia. I'm the teacher here, the teaching pastor. We gather here every Sunday evening at 8 p.m. And you can get the archives yourself of all the teaching on childrenofthefree.com and on YouTube. Um, I said something when the Senate and the Congress turned Republican that we need to worry about the vindictive things that Obama would try and do as the end of his term comes, and he did. And as Trump was elected, I said that we need to worry about what parting shots Obama would take, and he did. To name just two of them, as the days and hours of his term, of Obama's term were ended or ending, he released thousands of drug dealers out of prison. A lot of these things don't hit the news of the, what is called the Miss Media. Um, that's one. The other one is that he gave 220 plus million dollars to Palestine. That's almost a quarter of a billion dollars to Palestine, not Israel or ally. Then as the change of power approached, I said they're going to fight all things in or promise in the campaign all the way. They have. Of course, one of the most tumultuous is Trump's so-called Muslim ban. First of all, it's not a it's not a ban. And they're also making claims against a certain religion being discriminated against because of the religious freedom that we've enjoyed here in the United States of America. I've heard ad nauseum that it's a religion of peace. It's not. Islam means submission. All other religions try to add to their ranks by converting to their religion by missionary type work. Islam does so by changing their target's laws to their laws by force and by outbreeding and also by killing any opponents, opponents that stand against them or don't believe their way and will not change. I recently, I recently thought on God's, or taught on God's promises that the USA will never be defeated. Then most recently, that Armageddon will most likely be a conventional war. May I remind you of the teaching we've done already on the origin of the Arab nations and Islam. In Genesis, God promised a miraculous son to be born through Abraham and Sarah. He, Abraham, then tried in the flesh through Hagar, their handmaiden, and having Ishmael. God said, no, 
cast out the bondwoman and her son. The teaching that we did then shows or showed the destiny of the Ishmaelites, which would be the Arab nations, the, soon to be the Muslims, listing that they will come to fight with everybody, even their own brethren. And this was further elaborated saying that they would always persecute the children of promise, who is Isaac and his descendants that we find listed in Galatians. Let's review what God said about the children of, of the flesh. I want you to go with me to Romans 9, where we'll start out tonight. teaching and message. Romans 9, keep in mind that God already named in Genesis and renamed in Galatians the descendants of Ishmael as children of the flesh. It says here in chapter 9, verse 6, regarding that, verse 6 says, Not as though the word of God hath taken on effect, for they are not all Israel which are of Israel. Those are all born of those lines and born in that place. God is not considering of that place neither because they are the seed of Abraham, and they are, are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, is what he said. That is, in other words, they're going to explain here, that is, they which are children of the flesh, but who is that? The Ishmaelites, Israel. which became Israel. the Arab nations, which became the Muslims. The children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise, which Isaac, are counted for the seed. I'm not making that up. It says it right in the King James Bible. These are not the children of God. Now, amongst his campaign promises, which all prior presidents have not done, Trump went to work, he set to work immediately to take action in most, if not all, of his promises. And of course, the biggest fight will be on his temporary suspension of travel from countries that are hostile or sponsors of terrorism to this country, the so-called Muslim ban. Support your duly elected president and Senate and Congress. Send your prayers up. Stay in faith action. Keep the president and the Senate and the Congress feet to the fire and noses to the grinder to do what's right. Now, as promised, let's go together to the table of the Lord. I want to start out by going to two main points of Scripture of becoming a Christian because of what Christ did 
and getting in Christ, which Christ created the way to allow to happen. I want you to go with me to Romans 8. So I think we're already in Romans. Just go back a book. Romans 8. Speaking of books, I've taught you before that the original was not written with chapter and verse. It was just one solid book. It's important for us to remember that now because in this part of Scripture, actually we start out in Romans 7, the last of Romans 7, in verse 24, where Paul is saying because we do what we try not to do and we try and we don't do what we try to do. He's saying in verse 24, Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the answer. Who will deliver us from the body of this death? Now, no chapter and verse. There is no chapter 8, verse 1, but for purposes of references, we're going to chapter 8, verse 1. And it says, because of what he just said, he says, there is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. It goes on to say, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That phrase was not in the original manuscripts. It's been added. It ends where it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, period. Now that's something that he paid for in full price and we're going to get into some issues about the suffering that he went through when we go to communion tonight. But this is part of what he bought us, is that with the price he paid, once you become a believer in him and an actor in faith in him, there is no condemnation to you because you're in Christ Jesus, period. Now, I want you now to go to Hebrews 10. This is the other related scripture showing what he paid for and bought. We're going to go to Hebrews 10. We're going to start in verse 10. It says, By the which we are all sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. You need to hear that again. We are sanctified, that means set apart through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Verse 12, But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, forever, sat down on the right hand of God. That's what you do when you finish a job, when the work is done. That means that's it. There's nothing else that needs to be done or paid for. It's been done already. Read that again. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. And I've written in my margin here, work finished. Go to verse 14. For by one offering, it's going to sound like it's repeating things that it is from different viewpoints, by one offering he hath perfected, that's translating a Greek word which means completed, for by one offering he hath completed forever them that are sanctified, those that are set apart, forever. And then the real clencher here relating to those selfless, righteous, self-righteous people who particularly nowadays with the end seeming to be approaching, and it is, that we need to repent, repent of our sins. We need to stop sinning 
listen to verse 17. Those that are sanctified and those that have been paid for by that one offering forever. Verse 17 says, And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Yes. So, you don't need to repent of sins or stop sinning. He doesn't even remember them once you've reached that station. Now, at the Last Supper, the table of the Lord has become to be called the table of the Lord. When Jesus Christ served his disciples, he told them that he had to go and suffer. It's talking about the Passion. And speaking of which, Mel Gibson's movie, I think it's called The Passion. If you've never seen it, you need to see it. If you've seen it, you need to see it again. Because it comes about, about as close as you can in our lives to the suffering that he went through. It is said in scripture that when the time came, when the time was at hand, that he, Jesus, set his face steadfastly to go to Jerusalem. He knew what coming to Jerusalem meant, what he was going to have to go through. I want you to go with me to Luke 16 first. Luke 16, remember him setting his face steadfastly to go to Jerusalem, to be offered up, is what the more full scripture says. He knew what he was going to. Luke 16, verse 24 says, and he cried. And said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And send Lazarus, not the Lazarus we know about that was raised from the dead. This is a different Lazarus. And said, send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented by this flame. Go hop over from Luke 16 to Luke 22. It gets worse, folks. Verse 44 of Luke 22 says, And being in an agony, He prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He knew. Go to Matthew 17. Matthew 17, verse 12, uh, Jesus talked to his disciples. He said, Elias truly shall first come, talking about Elijah, and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah, Elias has come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of him. He told them 
that as often as we did this, or as often as they did this, and threw them to us, went to the table of the Lord and took communion to remember him and what he did. Now there's wine here at the table that represents his blood sweated out, I just told you, his blood shed as he suffered and took God's wrath for us on himself. And remembering that he did that and all those points there, you personalize it and say to him, thank you, Lord, for your grace. It's a gift of his grace. We can't earn it. We certainly don't deserve it. It's a gift of his grace, and we thank him for that. Now, part of what he did to get us there was sweating out his blood and shedding his blood to pay that price. Now, there's bread here at the table. This represents his suffering, all our illnesses and sicknesses, past, present, and future, wherein they say his visage was marred as he was buffeted by all illness and maladies known to man. Took all his sicknesses from us, lifted them up, and carried them away. And we keep this personalizing in the past tense, past tense and discerning his body by saying to him, Lord, with your stripes, I was healed. I will take the bread. But that's my message today. Now, it's offering time, so go ahead and get your offering together. And in closing, I want to say, move forward with Trump. In Christ, we made it through to the end and beyond. Make sure you press like, share this message with others, subscribe, and comment. You need to comment to let me know what's going on out there. We'll see you next week. Keep on walking in faith. Well, I searched and I searched for a road that led to glory. I wondered if I'd ever find my way I was so dismayed For the road it seemed so lonely But then I heard a voice within me say You've got to keep on walking Keep right on walking Walking in the light of the Lord, you'll get to heaven someday, can only get in the faith way, walking in the light of the Lord. Well, I faith and I faith, and the Lord, He gave me mercy. I faith and He brightened up my way. had grown so weary but then I heard a voice within me say you've got to keep on walking keep right on walking walking in the light of the Lord you get to heaven someday can only get in the faith way walking in the light of the Lord. You've got to keep on walking, keep right on walking, 
Walking 